I don't know if I will have the time to write any more letters because I might be too busy trying to participate. So if this does end up being the last letter, I just want you to know that I was in a bad place before I started high school. And you helped me. Even if you didn't know what I was talking about or know someone who's gone through it, you made me not feel alone. Because I know there are people who say all these things don't happen. And there are people who forget what it's like to be 16 when they turn 17. I know these will all be stories someday, and our pictures will become old photographs. And we'll all become somebody's mom or dad. But right now, these moments are not stories. This is happening. I am here, and I am looking at her. And she is so beautiful. I can see it. This one moment when you know you're not a sad story. You are alive. And you stand up and see the lights on the buildings and everything that makes you wonder. Listening to that song and that drive with the people you love most in this world. And in this moment, I swear, we are infinite. Dear Mom, I know that I've been a little more distant this year. But next year, it's going to be a lot worse because I won't even be in the house. I love you so much. You don't understand all the things that you've done for me. And no matter how much I scream or yell at you, you are still there for me. We've gotten into a lot of arguments and I'm sorry, but hey, that's what moms are for, right? I'm going to miss being able to talk to you every day when I'm bored. And I'm going to miss your cooking. Oh, uh... Sorry, that was supposed to be in dad's letter, not yours. <laughs> you supported me through all my activities and go to pretty much all of my events and don't complain about it. You make an effort to be there for not only me, but the boys as well, and you've always pushed us to do what makes us happy, and for that I will forever be thankful for you. It might seem that I don't appreciate you at times, but I will forever and always be grateful for the sacrifices you make for us. I love you so much. Dear Dad, you were a huge part of my creative side. You introduced me to so much music and new things and you were always supportive of my weird hobbies that I pick up. Like mom, I know that I can seem ungrateful, but I really do love all the efforts you make to watch me and the boys succeed. You work a lot and have odd hours, but you always try your hardest to make it to a choir concert or to a show. I remember when you almost couldn't make it to the musical this year and in a car ride back home from going out, you got a call from your coworker who said that you didn't have to come in on that Saturday anymore. It was probably one of the best feelings that I've ever had. You try to be there as much as you can, and that's only something that a dedicated father like you can say that he's done. I love all of our memories of going to concerts and dinners together, and I can't wait for us to grow our connection together even more when I'm gone. I love you so much, and thank you for being my number one supporter. Dear Dylan, you've been stuck with me for 15 years now, and I can't believe we haven't killed each other yet. When I leave, I'm going to miss your dumb jokes and Snapchat videos. I'm going to miss seeing you in the hallway at school, followed by a whip or some other cringe dance move that you always did back. I'll never forget our power play trips with dad, or when you chased me around the house with a knife, or when you sat on my face in our little pool and I had to bite you so you would get off of me. I'll miss managing all of your games and all the times when we would accidentally twin. We would walk out of our rooms and either laugh or groan about it, but we never changed our shirts. I know you probably don't want me to get very sappy, so I'm not going to get sappy. Honestly, I bet you're kind of excited that I'm leaving because now you'll never have to move my car when I park behind you, but you need to go somewhere. You know, until I come back during breaks. I am so proud of the person that you've become, and I hope that you will continue to grow into the amazing person I know you are going to be. I love you, and always remember that I'm your older sister, so that means that I can always boss you around even when I'm gone. Dear Julian, oh, Julian, where do I even begin? When you were little, it felt like you were gonna be little forever. 
In fact, sometimes I still think that you are six years old. But here we are and you are on the brink of being a full-blown teenager. How does it feel? The things I would do to be 12 again. Uh, uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm glad I'm not 12 anymore. Middle school? It can suck, but it also shapes you into the person that you'll be in a few years. Let's be honest, you haven't really been my favorite brother this year, but it's okay because you're six years younger than me, and right now I just think that all kids your age are annoying. But I promise, I still love you so much, and I hope that as you get older, you come up to me for advice on things like high school or life. I will, no I will never forget all the times that you would crack stupid jokes that were so awful, but <laughs> mom thought they were just the funniest things ever. The endless hours you would spend in your room shouting, Mom! Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna miss that. But really, thank you so much for being my brother, and I cannot wait to see the person that you'll become. I love you so much, j Dog, and you're gonna do great things. Canteri. From my first day in that class, I knew I belonged there. It was such a warm welcome, and my seniors my freshman year were so amazing to me. Being one of the only two freshmen in that class, it's safe to say that I was nervous. But everyone was so helpful and made me not so nervous anymore. Canteri really pushed me in the right direction and got me where I am today with choir. I will always cherish the memories of crying during bonding sessions and the ritual we always do before concerts when we would huddle up and whisper, Canteri. My confidence as a person and as a singer stems from this class, and I would have never gone out for another platinum solo if it wasn't for you girls. Thank you so much, and I love you all. Past, present, and future Cantor I gals. You are all going to do amazing things. I know you will.
Dear Primo Voci, oh my gosh, I, I honestly don't even know how to start this. <laughs> I wanted to join Primo to experience something different than Cantor I and to branch out my senior year. I'm not for sure if that was a mistake or a blessing, but it was probably one of the best decisions I've made this year. Yes, I occasionally want to scream at everyone every day, and yes, sometimes I want to duct tape everyone's mouth shut, but I love you all so much. You've shown me what it's like to live on the dangerous side of life as in almost crossing Mrs. Inneking's line of patience every day, and you have shown me that once you get into a men and women's ensemble, you probably won't go back to an all-women's ensemble. <laughs> there are so many people that I love and cherish from that class, and I have made so many friendships there. I will miss Eileen always screaming my name and telling me that she loves me, I will miss Malachi always being late to class, and Waylon and Wrigley's stupid R.A.P. XXX, we love you, and CC's after the concert messages that they leave on the whiteboards. Jaden and his pipe organ settings on the piano, <laughs> and of course, my favorite part of Primo, Brayden Beetleson's hugs that he never fails to give me even on his worst days. Hey, Brayden, this one's for you. Ah! <laughs> this class has so much personality to it, and you never know what is going to happen during a rehearsal, and even though we can get off track and unfocused, we always somehow pull it together. We just uh, take the long way to get there, I guess. You guys have taught me so much and everyone in that class, from my son to my hubby to the highest soprano and the lowest bass, I will forever love and thank you guys as my first real mixed ensemble. And I wouldn't trade the time I spent with you crazies for anything in the world. Thank you. Dear Mrs. Inneking, we only got one year together and to be honest, it kind of makes me sad. I would have loved to spend a few more years here with you and Miss Widger. You've been so amazing here, and honestly, you are handling Primo way better than what I expected. You work your hardest to make sure that we know what we are doing, and you are always down to help anyone with anything that they need. You supported me with my scholarship auditions, and you have helped me find a new confidence in my singing that I never thought that I would have. I love being your aid. No, not because the only thing I have to do is make copies. P.S. Copying 20 plus pages of the whole musical score was not my favorite week of the year. P.P.S. I pretty much own that printing machine now. <laughs> but because I love seeing and hearing the change in concert choir from the first rehearsal to their concert, it's crazy how much a choir can change in a few months. I am so happy that you came here this year and I am going to miss your sassy and sarcastic personality that I love. And your baby. She's pretty cute too. I hope that you and Miss Widger continue to grow the choir family here and just know that I always be here even if it's just to say hi. I love you so much and thank you for trusting and believing in me since the first day you met me. Dear Video 2, I cannot believe that the whole year has gone by so fast. Listen, you guys know that I'm kind of whack, but thank you for most of the time not really caring about my loud and frantic personality. I feel like this year's class worked well with the way that I handle situations and that you guys didn't blow up me as much. Also, I only cried twice this year, so improvement on me for not being as sensitive. Woohoo! <laughs> this was such a strange group, but yet we worked so well together. Our 24-hour film fest videos? Amazing. Uh, the freaking short film? Hecka amazing. Our dance video was literally from the idea that Caleb was always humming songs. Like, what type of group comes up with stuff like that? Us. A group like us, that's who. We have such a talented group of people and I'm excited for the things that you're going to create. If you think that you can't top the amazing ideas from this year, well then, in the simplest way possible, I'm going to ask you to apply the try harder method, and if that didn't work, well, then suck it. I love you guys all so much and thank you for, well, thank you for being you. <laughs> Dear listener, this is it. This is my last words to the cozy little village of Eudora. Eudora, my home since forever. The only house I've lived in that I can remember is here. I've lived in all the bedrooms in that house and each one shares a different memory. My pink room that I eventually had to share with Dylan holds all of our secret nights of staying up late and playing until mom and dad told us to go to bed. My yellow room, which was covered in Hannah Montana wall stickers and posters, will forever be the room where I became independent. I would lock myself in there for hours making videos with Gracie, and I would stay up until the early hours of the morning reading my favorite Junie B. Jones chapter books. My purple room, 
which I got when I was in the sixth grade, will always remind me of my teenage years. Endless sleepovers were held in that room, and so many conversations about the boys we liked were held in there, and as I got older, it became my safe space. I painted it gray my junior year because I wanted to feel more grown up. At the time, I didn't realize that maybe I wanted to grow up too fast because now I don't want to grow up this fast anymore. This house, 35 Browning Court, is a place I call home and will always call home. Eudora High School, a place I spent four years of my life. Those four years went by so fast and I can't believe it's already over. The countless nights I spent here at rehearsals and games and concerts are nights that I will never forget. Every opening show and all my final finales are moments here that I don't think I could forget. They were and are such a huge part of my life and making me who I am today. There is no way those memories could leave my mind so quickly. Every moment spent in the choir room, every laugh, every mental breakdown are all parts of me that make me, well, they make me who I am. My funky, spontaneous, and really loud personality all come from here, from this little building. The one with the gym where I would sit on the sidelines and take so many pictures at. From the fields where I would cheer on my friends and my brother. Every part of the school made me into the outgoing but shy girl that is about to enter the very, very scary and very, very real world. And now, it's time to go. I need to start my life. I mean, my life is so amazing here, but there comes a point when you have to leave your home and make a new one. And my time is now. No, class of 2019, our time is now. So, this is it. This is what we've been working for for the past 12 years. This year, this month, this week, this day, this hour, this minute, this second, this moment. This is the moment we've been waiting for. And in this moment, I swear we are all infinite. And we're gonna be infinite forever. So thank you, class of 2019. I don't think there is any other group of people that I want to spend the last 12 years with.